football. That's the biggest free agent move in the history of the NFL in terms of shocking the world. Uh, Peyton Manning to the Broncos, and when Glazer broke uh, far to the Jets, it was just incredible. I remember that. It was incredible. Uh, he'll be joining us in five minutes, a lot of different moves. Let me start with this, though. Is though the Seahawks now, Jimmy Graham's going to Green Bay, and um, wide receiver Paul Richardson is leaving as well. So uh, the fifth and sixth Seahawks starters to leave in six days. And I was looking at Seattle this morning, and are they now more reputation than reality? Last year, they lost to the Rams, Atlanta, Washington, and the Arizona Cardinals at home. Seattle was a 4-4 four and four team at home last year. Their last two playoff wins have been over wild card teams. One of them, Minnesota on the road, was a fluke. Has the NFL figured out Seattle? Are they like the weather in Seattle? Brief sunshine followed by clouds and darkness. I was talking in division this morning with the team. And I said, if you took the Rams and the Seahawks units in division, this isn't the whole NFL, just the Rams in division. I would give the Rams an advantage at running backs, receivers, offensive line, defensive line, secondary, and special teams. Seahawks get a clear edge at linebacker. Seattle has a major issue on their hands, offensive line. They have major issues on their hand, secondary, which the Rams just solved. And they don't have a ton of cap space, although now no Richard Sherman and no Jimmy Graham and no Michael Bennett. That will clear up some cap space. But the Seattle Seahawks, 12 teams in the NFL, allowed fewer points than the Seahawks did last year. And when I think of the NFC this morning, and I think of talent, direction, unit-to-unit -unit strength, I think of the Vikings, I think of the Eagles, I think of the Rams, I think of the Saints, I think of the Cowboys, I think of the Falcons. Don't kid yourself. Dallas has a really nice group of players. Good old line, got a pass rusher, got a quarterback, star running back. Young, talented corners and two elite, I, I consider, really, really high-end linebackers. Cowboys need a safety and a wide receiver. Those aren't major holes. You can win a Super Bowl not having great receivers. You can win a Super Bowl not having great safeties. Um, I look at Seattle right now, and has the league figured them out? Has the league figured them out? Now, I, I still think Pete Carroll's a good coach, but I've always had a theory on Pete. If you look at Pete's three jobs, his longest head coaching jobs, New England, USC, and Seattle, they've all bought it, kind of been the same with Pete Carroll. He brings a ton of energy. He gets a total buy-in. Now, that's Pete's recipe in New England, USC, and Seattle. Big energy to a stale franchise. Players buy in. It's very player-friendly. And then in the end, gets a little loose. Yes, a little loose in New England at the end. They couldn't win in division. Lost six of their last six, seven in division games. At USC in the end, Harbaugh, Jim Kelly come to town. They unraveled. Now in the NFC West, oh, here comes Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay, like Chip Kelly and Harbaugh to the Pac-12, kind of unraveling a bit. They don't have cap space. Rams, Niners do. So has the league, has the window closed? They still have Pete. They still have Russell. Love Doug Baldwin, Bobby Wagner. But it's interesting with Seattle right now. I... A couple years ago, everybody was afraid of them. This volume and the speed and it, and quite, they were four and four at home last year. Okay, it's NFL free agency time. The biggest story in the world, I remember the day it happened, was far to the Jets. And that's what makes this so much fun. This is one of my favorite weeks of the non football season. Jay Glazer broke that story. And other than Peyton Manning to Denver, in, in my lifetime, free agency, you know, you got a guy here, a guy here, a guy here. Uh, Favre was a trade. Favre, Favre trade to the Jets in this period was literally earth-shattering. It was earth-shattering, and Jake Glazer broke it. I want to bring him on and ask him several questions because this hey. is... Hey! Hello, Miss Lady. How are you? What's Little going step on? Brother there. This is, a, on, this, this is a really... In, I think it's... Fa I love it. Yeah. Now, some of this stuff doesn't mean that much, but Sammy Watkins to the Chiefs, it's fun. It's football. We it's, like it. It's really fantasy football. It really is. <laughs> okay, so... Hey, when, by, by the way, the Favre story? Yeah. That Favre story ended up... When he got traded to the Jets, I broke the story. It was, I was in the Orlando airport, and early in the morning, it was like 9 o'clock in the morning, I was told, don't get on the plane, because Favre's about to get traded somewhere. It was the Buccaneers or the Jets. Every hour on the hour, I'm like, is he getting traded? Is he getting traded? Is he getting traded? So from 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., all the way to midnight. I couldn't get on any of the flights. I ended up saying, like, I never hated Mickey Mouse so much in my life. I looked at him all day long. And finally, 1230, like, go to the Jets. And as I was doing it, ESPN was on the air, and I think it was 
course, Sal Palantoni was on the air saying he, he bought in a Bruce Allen, who's the GM of the uh, Washington. Redskins right now, but yeah. he was with the Buccaneers, yeah. who was selling everybody that, hey, he's going to come down to their Buccaneers. You can never, I mean, the only time Bruce isn't telling you something that's false is when his lips aren't moving. Whoa. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a politician. He's got, I like Bruce. He's funny, but it's like you got to triple check what Bruce tells you something. So poor Sal's on the air, and he's like, hey, we're down here in Tampa waiting for Brett Favre is going to be traded down here. And as he does that, somebody comes on from ESPN and says, oh, Sal, oh, this just in Jay Glazer, Fox just reported. Brett Favre was just <laughs> traded to the Jets. What do you know? Like, why is he on the air? Like, what are you doing to the poor guy? <laughs> now, by the way, that Mel Kuyper once told me this years ago. He goes, I'm lied to you all day. I've right. just got to figure out which lies are the closest to the truth. Because right. they're all lies. Yeah. Do you, and I mean, you don't have to tell me specific names. When it comes to free agency, do you is it GMs, coaches, or players that you trust and get a lot of your info? All of them. All okay. three. Yeah, because they're all. I'm, you know, some of the insiders were kind of like the middlemen because they want to know who is. They call really you for the info, and, and a lot of because you want to know who's really telling the truth. I want to make sure if there's real interest here or not. And some of it, a lot of these players, they'll get in their heads like, I really want to go to this team, and they'll try and convince their agent. They are perfect fit for this team. This team really may not have that much interest. That's right. And the agent is trying to get them off of that team to another team that really has interest. But the player is looking at him like, you're not doing your job because I want to be at that team. Okay, so let's talk Richard Sherman. Right. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I've been told San Francisco is going to – they drafted a corner last year. If Denzel Ward's available, they like Denzel Ward too. They, they, they got a good front seven. They got the quarterback. They need some receivers. They get, Okay. So I don't know if Richard Sherman, I don't know if the best fits the Niners, but I know he wanted to play with the oh, Niners. No doubt. Yeah, no so, doubt. So give me the story, the backstory okay. on this. The backstory, actually, I know he's come out and he said, well, you know, Se uh, Seattle didn't want to match. It's interesting. What people don't know is he called John Schneider, the GM of the, the Seahawks, and John was actually giving him guidance on how to do his deal because he's his own agent. So it wasn't like they thought they were doing him a solid. I think Richard looked at it like, here's my deal because I want you guys to match. They're looking at it like, we're trying to help you out and guide you since you're being your own agent, and this is where you can get more money. Obviously, it helps the Seahawks if he gets a lot more money. Of course. Hurts their cap, right? So they were doing a solid to him. Absolutely, and they're trying to say, hey, look, even when you're talking to other teams, even if you're just going to do the 49ers, make sure you present it. You, you go to these other teams or you tell these other teams this is the type of money you're being offered, you want, and they, they actually were guiding him and trying to help him. So they were a little shocked when he came out and said, well, no, you know, they did me wrong. I tried it, and they said no. So that's not the way we, we looked at it at all. But they knew they were going to move on from last year. They really tried to gauge the trade interest there on, on him also when that whole thing went down of, you know, him and Russell, and does he want to be here? And he was saying he, he wants out. Um, so it's always been this didn't come as a shock to him or them that he was moving on. Okay, the Kirk Cousins situation. I, I always joke, there's some things in life you overpay for. Central air in Arizona, a winter coat in the Northeast, and quarterbacks. I'm, I'm so stealing that from you, by the way. But quarterbacks, you just overpay for. Yeah. With Kirk Cousins, I, 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 I know they didn't want to pay him that, but it's 4 to $5 million from what? I mean, how is it going to dismantle the Vikings yeah. next two years? So here's, you know, I talked to the Vikings about it last night, and they're like, we're just tired of playing quarterback you know, roulette. Like, we just wanted somebody in there. We do think we have a guy we could build it. And look, we just saw this past year, you don't need your quarterback to be Tom Brady to go far. Because yes. we just had Foles and Keenum. Right. You just need a guy that you really know is, is going to be a grown-up and not screwed up for everybody else. Going to be a grown-up. Yeah. So, Kirk, it's pretty interesting, though, because he's beat up. He, he really is. When, I, when he first got there, I remember going out with him and a bunch of the offensive linemen, and the old linemen were like, we love this guy. RG3? No relationship with. No relationship. This kid, they're like, oh, my God, we love him. He's like, he's one of us. He's the type of guy we're all going to go out with. And they love him. But over the last couple of years, they beat up on him so much yeah. that it certainly fractured, I think, whether it's his confidence or just his whole aura. And then you see guys now in Washington just start ripping him. Yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. yesterday. It's, I think it's just affected him the last couple of years. Look, if your boss is constantly saying, you're not worth it, you're not worth it, you're not worth it. That's right. And we're going to screw your name up when we talk about you publicly. Um, by the way, Kurt, cause I mean, come on. So, um, when the Vikings brought him in, they realized too, we gotta, we gotta love him up an awful lot. Yeah. Like Zim's going to have to learn how to be like a happy, nice guy right. to, 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 yeah. to, to really love him up here. But they are, they think that, okay, we finally have a guy we know next three years, we don't have to worry about the position. We don't have to worry. Even at the end here with Keenum, they were still saying, well, if he falters here, we're going to put him. Bridgewater, if he falters here, we're going to put in Bradford. That's done. That's all done. Okay, now, I, I said 
everybody in the NFC, I mean, I, I think you can still win with Eli, with Nate Solder, mm-hmm. and if you got Saquon Barkley mm-hmm. and OBJ comes back, Giants will be fine offensively. They'll score points, but. They need more Eric, than that on the old line. Huh? They need more than that on the offensive line. They have a bad old line this year. Ooh. I would argue Arizona, having lived in Vegas, is in danger of becoming an old mobster. They're going to disappear in the desert. Okay, they're in a division with Goff twice a year, Garoppolo twice a year, Shanahan twice a year, McVay twice a year, Russell Wilson twice a year, right. Pete Carroll twice a year. They don't have a quarterback. Right. Okay, Jay, in the, 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 the Colts, Chris Ballard, you know him. Okay, they need multiple players. They need multiple guys. Uh, Bradley Chubb's a good player. If I'm Arizona and I called them and said, I got to get Josh Rosen, I got to get Baker, I'm not going to get Darnold. Couldn't Arizona call today and say, you can have a first, a second, a third, next year's first. If you're Arizona, don't you have to have to get a quarterback? I would think them and a Denver would have called something like that, but I, I don't. Am I not nuts here? That's not, yeah, I don't think the contract, you're talking about trading for Andrew Luck. I just think, A, if you're going to do Not trading it, Andrew Luck. No, no, oh. trading for the pick. If oh, I'm Arizona, pick. I want to get to the third pick. I'll give up anything oh, to get to the third pick. I think they'll still be able to get a quarterback where they are. Or they can move up a little bit. I think they'll be able to get that, that quarterback. They loved enough of these quarterbacks in this draft. They did. Yeah, they did. They really did, which is why they didn't really jump into the Grappolo uh, trade talks. It's, it's interesting even that everybody's looking at it now saying, oh, my gosh, Jimmy, is look, look at what he was. You just you didn't fully know it because, look, we all thought Brissett was going to be phenomenal, and then he turned out to be you know, a, a, a solid fill-in quarterback you know, on that level. Um, but you don't want to go out and give a two and this, the highest contract in the history of the NFL if you're not absolutely positive about it and if you love some of these quarterbacks coming out. So and you're telling love, me they do. They do. They love some of these quarterbacks coming out. You know, and again, they go out and they get a guy like Sam Bradford who, you know, Sam's knee is obviously, it's an issue, but they're like, we want one of these young guys. And for a guy like Sam, Sam's a coach. Yeah. They'll true to these young guys. But they've liked these young guys since – the start of last season. Okay, so is there anything? Um, I mean, I I think the Eagles adding Bennett. I mean, you can't double team him in Philly. I mean, I, I still think he's a disruptive player. I like Michael Bennett, the player. I think he's a disruptive right. player. Uh, Philadelphia is very interesting. They're not they're not resting. They're, Howie Roseman's moving. That to me has been exciting. I like to see, but like New England's like okay, we're we're always going to add pieces. Right. Anything in free agency that has surprised you a little. Well, actually, you just brought it up, and, and it stems with the Eagles because last couple of years, free agency's been a bad game of fantasy football. Guys whose names are big who are getting overpaid, and you just don't win that way. You don't build, and a lot of teams realize that. They're like, we're not doing this. We're not going and throwing a boatload of money than Dominic and Sue's and all those guys. It's not a huge type of, of market because it just doesn't work that way. Right. It's you got to build through the draft. Yes. You got you to smartly go get an Andrew Whitworth that you know is going to help the, the quarterback. That was a, the that's a great play. one. Hey, that right? was a great that's move. That's the type of guys you need. But then all of a sudden, the Philadelphia Eagles happened last year. And the Eagles went out, and they got guys like Alshon Jeffrey and the Chris Longs, and then they traded for J.H.I. They almost played this game that has become taboo in free agency over the last couple of years, except for a few teams, the Washington Denver. Redskins of the world. Right? That's, that's all that really did it. And all of a sudden, Philly has success with it. And that's why I think you see all these teams this year, they have changed their ways. They're like, oh, because it's a whatever you've done for me lately. Now, that's a really good point. So the Rams had success with it. Right. And the Eagles had success with so it. So it must work. <laughs> well, you've said this before. <laughs> it's a copycat league. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Uh, Jay- hey, by the way, and this is- Michael Jordan always had a relationship with the Bulls where there was a little simmering resentment. Right. Magic and the Lakers loved each other. Jeter and the Yankees loved each other. Glazer and Fox loved each other. Love. But there are <laughs> these relationships. Big Ben and the Steelers. Yeah. Michael and the Bulls. <laughs> I kind of feel like Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. The Instagram, the quarterback coach, Jordy Nelson, I love you, still got a buy. Is there a little thing there where it ain't Jeter and the Yankees and it's not Magic and the Lakers and it's not Duncan and the Spurs here in Green well, Bay? Well, there's no owner to go at it with it's totally different right there's no owner that after you're, you're gonna you know do i really fit with this guy or not i think that you look at jordy and the relationship yeah he may be upset but i'm telling you what he is definitely draining his stars with jimmy graham he is sitting there going right now go oh we're okay like that i think jimmy so far has been the best pickup of any team out there so you think aaron loves that oh my god i think he is because when they got martellus bennett last year 
they were so excited, like, oh, this is what we need. We need this, this tight end, this safety valve who can go down the middle and this cover two buster. And we need some personality in the lo- this locker room. Fortunately, with Marty, they got a lot of personality yeah. in the locker room. Yeah. Several of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with Jimmy, they're getting that player, that, that dynamic player that Aaron really hasn't had from that position. And it's interesting because when he was in Seattle, it was like Daryl Bevel didn't know how to really use him. And with the Saints, he always knew, okay, in these situations, in third and short, goal line, I know where my role, I know where I'm going to be. I know where, even if I line up over here and they cover this, Drew and I are going to you know, make, make it happen over here. With Seattle, they almost, and that was the one concern they had when they were trading for him is, are we going to be able to be creative enough for him? I don't know how you can't, I, but he just never really fit. Yeah, no, no, no. F- Seattle was a tough punch in the forehead team. Jimmy's a finesse, non-blocking yeah. tight end. I, I, oh, I never. Now I know why the Saints wanted Max Unger to upgrade their mm-hmm. O line for Drew. But I, I, to your point, I never felt Jimmy Graham yeah. fit their culture. He fits though. It's not that he doesn't fit the culture of the offense, not the defense, but the offense. Um, but they. Yeah, they just didn't know how to use him scheme-wise. He is a great mismatch weapon. Oh, of course. He's a 6'7 no guy who can run. And they couldn't figure really out how to – how to. The Bevel couldn't figure out the best way to make that mismatch happen. So now I think with Green Bay, with, with McCarthy and, and Aaron, oh, for not especially once – because Aaron has two different things. Aaron has the play, and he drops back, and the moment it starts to break down, Aaron starts to run around and improvise, and then play two happens. I think Jimmy Graham will be perfect with his speed for when play two happens. Good seeing you, Jay. You too, buddy. Thanks. All right. So you got your phone with you right now? Of course. Are you kidding me? Say, if anything happens here in the next <laughs> minute when I read this spot. You got it. Jay Glazer. The tournament's here. College hoop. Baseball season fast approaching. Hockey in the Oh, end. I do. What do you got? Honey Badger. Getting cut by the Cardinals. There you go. <laughs> Honey Badger just got <laughs> cut by Arizona. Breaking news. Okay, I'm going to read this spot. Continue to break news during the spot. SeatGeek is an app. It's a great app. Comedy tickets, concert tickets, theater tickets. You get $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Download it. Enter the promo code H-E-R-D. Now, if you're going to go to an Arizona Cardinal game, Honey Badger just got cut. He will not be there. If you're going to go to a Viking game, they're going to have a new quarterback. His name is Kirk Cousins. The promo code is HERD. The SeatGeek app, by far the easiest, and and they go out and find this. They grade the tickets. 20 bucks off. SeatGeek. Jay Glazer. Breaking it, baby. It's the herd.